Is the Garmin estimated sweat loss an accurate calculation? Let's find out. What's up everybody, Coach Liz here with The Run Experience and today I'm testing out if the estimated sweat loss found on your watch, whether you've got a Garmin, Suunto, Koros, whatever it may be, if that number is actually pretty correct. So in order to find this out, I'm going to actually perform a sweat test. So this means I will be heading into the bathroom, taking a weight uh, completely naked and then making sure previous to all that i'm emptied out in every way shape or form so i've already gone to the bathroom i've done my business and once i have got that calculation write that down go for a run now today i happen to be doing five by one thousand meter repeats uh with some strides at the end this is going to take me a little over an hour so totally uh with the warm up and the cool down so i figured today would be a totally perfect day to do this and uh once i am done i'm going to include of course any water or anything that i have taken in during that run and i'm going to take my weight again completely naked on the scale and find out what in pounds I've actually lost and then figure out how many milliliters or ounces that translates to. All right, let's get started. That's it, five by 1,000 meters complete, three by 200 meter stride out complete. Now we go way back in. All right, I'm back, finished the workout. I have completed my next way in or way out if you will and now, it also is important to note that I have not or had not drank any fluids. I have not gone to the bathroom in between those tests because I just really wanted to get a very clear and accurate number. I didn't want to have to estimate how many ounces that I drank, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, very important to note that I just didn't uh, do that. Now, also conditions outside. It was 50 degrees out today, which for some of you uh, on this continent, may not think that that's very warm, but it was very warm for me. Think about it as like 10 degrees warmer than it actually is. And the sun was beating down on me. So it was warm. I wore pants, I was overdressed, and I kind of knew that halfway through. But again, this is a sweat test, so let's figure this out. Like, let's see if, uh, let's see what actually happens here, right? So grabbing my handy dandy notebook here. All right, weigh in before the workout was 144.2 pounds and my weigh in after the workout was 142.8, meaning I have lost 1.4 pounds to be exact. Now translate that to ounces. So you could take 16 ounces, multiply that by 1.4, and you will get 22.4 ounces lost in that workout. Now Garmin has it in there as milliliters. So I converted that to milliliters and it came out to be about 60.66 milliliters roughly. So 600, and, I'm sorry, 660 milliliters. So, uh, now, let's verify that up against Garmin. Pulled up my workout and Garmin had said that I had, my estimated hydration loss was 697 milliliters. So in conclusion, my opinion is that this is a pretty good estimate. Although Garmin overestimates, honestly, it's a good way of knowing whether or not you need to hydrate more or less during your workouts or post-workout. It's actually a tool that I've been using for a while. I use the uh, hydration tracker on my Garmin and lots of other uh, run 
watch companies out there have these same tools and uh, I all day I whatever I drink I hi, I log into uh, my watch and it updates onto the app so I know exactly what I've been drinking all day and then also at the end of the day Garmin will update your overall requirement that includes what you lost during your workouts. So if you're not someone who wants to do a sweat test a bunch of times, I say go ahead, use the one that's on your Koros, your Garmin, your Suntos, any one of those watch companies that have that hydration loss estimate, go ahead and use that. Um, otherwise, getting a little more narrowed down number for you and yourself, uh, doing this sweat loss test is actually a great way to do so. The first time I ever did this was actually working with a nutritionist who was creating a fueling plan for me while I was racing at elevation. And uh, so it was really handy to have and to know how much I should be truly, according to me and my own self, hydrating. Now, a quick note on on us ladies, if you are, depending on what part of your cycle you are in, you may lose more sweat than you would versus another, say your low hormone phase versus your high hormone phase. And so try to kind of drinking to thirst or drinking a little bit more during that high hormone phase is important as we do not, uh, we just cannot hydrate as well during that high hormone phase, that low hormone phase when our, our hormones are a little bit more uh, balanced. In other words, with the, the testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, uh, that is something that we may want to consider and know that, hey, when we're at that level, we feel pretty good and drinking thirst may be okay. Uh, but hey, like I said, this, uh, this is a lot of fun to uh, do. I will include the formula down below in the description along with a handy spreadsheet that I found online that where it actually does the calculations for you. So once you weigh in, weigh out, and then add in other hydration that you have uh, taken in or consumed during your workout, it will automatically include that in there. And also uh, you would add or subtract depending on if you urinated. The suggestion is about 200 to 300 milliliters per urination or go pee. And I'm just gonna say it, go pee, okay? So that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. It was a lots of fun. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. So thank you for watching uh, and uh, have a fantastic rest of your training season and I will catch you in the next one.